I want to welcome you, the media, to the MCA, the Medicinal Cannabis Authority. I want to assure you this is not any sort of formal opening. This is really just a media event. As a matter of fact, every year we are supposed to present an annual report to Parliament. And we're supposed to undergo our audit. We've we successfully been able to complete that. And we thought we would just top that off with a media event to really show the people. Now, unfortunately, we cannot invite large gatherings to the site you know, in view of COVID-19 that we, we still have to be very aware of. But we thought that by having a media event where we've invited um, you know, some of the more well-known media and, and the printing press, that we will be able to put out what has really been accomplished here in St. Vincent Grandees. I would like to only welcome uh, our minister, the Honorable Saboto Caesar, um, and I want to welcome you once again and for the leadership and the vision and all those things that you have been providing to the sector and certainly to the authority. I want to also welcome two individuals First of all, um, we have the Deputy Secretary General, Deputy Assistant Secretary General, correction, um, Dr. Douglas Slater, who's charged the issue of regional liberalization and legalization of medicinal cannabis was put into his hands. This would have been back in 20. 13, 2014, on the request of our own Prime Minister, um, making a presentation at the Heads of Government Conference at CARICOM. And Dr. Slater was then able to put together a commission. And I want to also add that we have, um, as one of the representatives on that commission, Mr. Kishaw Shallow, um, who I think represented the sector very well and we are very happy that they were able to bring out a full report in 2017-2018 that was reviewed and various sections of it is being followed by the various governments and the various countries in around the Caribbean. I want to certainly express um, our own sincere thanks to all those at CARICOM that would have helped in their own way of helping to bring us this far and putting this together. So I want to give a little round of applause to Dr. Slater and uh, Ms. Dr. Kishaw Shallow, if I should say. Now, by now, I think everyone should be aware of where we have reached. And this starts here at the authority but it's supposed to be a relatively short program here I said this is not an opening ceremony but we wanted to recognize a number of milestones that have taken place so far now um, in our audience uh, a number of our traditional cultivators. I note Mr. Junior Spirit Cottle and persons from a number of other organizations out of Clare Valley, out of Chumaka, out of Greggs. And we certainly want to welcome you. And then there's the MCA staff. But you are now at the Medicinal Cannabis Authority headquarters. This is our administrative center. And it should be noted that we are built on several pillars. One, that we have been able to achieve something that was thought not to be possible. A legal corresponding banking. And today, we are able to move funds from Canada Europe, 
through Canada and other parts of the Caribbean to St. Vincent the Grenadines and back out. This does not include the United States, which is still on the federal restriction. And that's a little unfortunate, but it has somewhat limited what we um, would have liked to achieve. As a matter of fact, there are several investors who come out of been trying to come to St. Vincent who hail from the United States. And they've tried. They've not been able to consummate the arrangements that we have with them in terms of paying their fees and so forth. And such to the extent that whereas in the past you may have heard that we would have put out bills for in the region of close to 16 million that in fact we would have only um, achieved payment of just about six million dollars so far and this may change in due course depending on what happens in the united states but our larger licenses which came from the united states um, or had persons who invested in the united states even if they owned one percent of a company there was a restriction in terms of them being able to truly invest here in St. Vincent Grand. And some very good companies have had to essentially um, withdraw in terms of that regard. Now, the second pillar is that it's been mandated by the United Nations under their um, International Narcotics Control Board that we have to have a tracking system, a seed to sale. And we have been quite lucky in the sense that our negotiation we have teamed with ample organics the leading seed to sale company in canada they account for over 80 percent of that market and we now have a firm contractual relationship with them to provide both a tracking system for our patient access patients who are receiving prescriptions, as well as for all the cultivation and export aspects that are in. And we we we, we quite pleased. And then another important pillar is that building that you see uh, to your left. That is our new state-of-the-art laboratory. It is an analytical service provider which is going to provide the testing for all aspects of the industry, from pesticide to heavy metals to potency. Now, as said, this is not a formal opening, so you, the equipment is not there. And we just have some data connection and some a special flooring we have to put in, an epoxy flooring, which is essential for accreditation of laboratories today. And so you will find those. But basically, infrastructure is all set and ready. And we're hoping that the equipment will be coming in very shortly within a matter of over the next uh, three to four. And as a result of that, we will be able to begin testing at a national level. And we also hope, in due course, as other countries um, enter into this field, that we might be able to offer them you know, the services of also having their product tested right here in St. Vincent Grandis if they're not able to provide it in their own island. But I want to say that our most essential asset has been our traditional cultivators. And you know, it, it has been quite remarkable, the various experts and so who've come here they have found that the knowledge that our traditional cultivators possess with respect to the weather condition the care of the plants the identification of diseases identification of male and hermaphrodite species and what is good about this and what is not that the experts have learnt a tremendous amount from our traditional cultivators and I am of the view that we have some of the best traditional cultivators in the world now in other places 
they focus a lot on indoor cultivation. And St. Vincent and the Grenadines is quite blessed. Our closeness, our proximity to the equator gives us certain a number of hours of sunlight each day that's far greater than countries that are further north. We seem to have a fair, a, 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 a real wonderful supply of clean, clear water, not just for drinking, but also for our plants. And this is, this is quite remarkable. But in addition, you've heard me talk about it, in, more in the north of the island, we have a special soil, a soil called Moloch Andersol that only occupies 0.75%, that's less than 1% of the Earth's crust. And this soil is considered to be a highly special soil that's proven to be quite ideal for cannabis because of certain properties that it has. And this, as we would expect, is volcanic soil. I remember when we had the eruption of La Soufre in 79, the following year, Barbados thanked St. Vincent for, uh, you know, the volcanic ash that fell and giving them a bumper cane crop. Well, we are hoping that the combinations of a lot of strategic advantages here in St. Vincent can propel St. Vincent to our goal of having the highest quality and at a price and at a cost that is affordable and doable for our various cultivators. I must tell you, we have issued 17 licenses. Some of them have not, persons have not been able to pursue because of the US issue that we pointed out. But we have also issued licenses to 10 groups. And the membership of these groups far exceed 120 members. Some of these groups are quite large, others are smaller. We have also issued licenses to now close to 45 uh, traditional cultivators, individual licenses. And we've also issued licenses to about 15 local cultivators, persons who may not have had um, any experience with cultivation in cannabis before, of course, as it was illegal, now. Basically, they are, are now part of it. And what we've been encouraging is that the investors have to link with traditional cultivator groups and traditional cultivators and establish those contractual arrangements and MOUs so as to purchase the product from them. And we are quite pleased that based on our laws, based on our regulations, and based on the team here at the MCA, we have been able to do this. I'm also quite proud of our patient access regulation. Today, Patients can now go to their doctor who ha have been trained, and we've trained over 98 doctors and pharmacists in how to prescribe and how to administer medicinal cannabis. And I am I'm really happy to say that we've re now received several applications from doctors. We've approved them, and patients are now talking about it, and we've now gotten the first dispensary. I'm sure there'll be others and persons were able to have their prescription filled. I must tell you that in our laws, we also allow for patients from other countries, from Canada, from Europe, from even the United States, who come here on a cruise ship or come here for a day or two to bring their prescription. Or they may be able to call in online and get their prescription filled for their medicinal cannabis. And I know that earlier on there was a display as a medical doctor, sharing you know, with, with Dr. Slater, it is amazing the medicinal benefits of cannabis. And the years in which the Rastafari used to expound this and say it's good for this, and we, we just didn't believe them. As doctors, we didn't believe them. I want to say the Rastafari were right. And I'm really happy that we have now adopted some of their, their methodology. I must tell you, we know the list of things that it is approved for. For those persons who don't have any hair, the cannabis is not going to make your hair grow. Yes, sir? And for those, for certain other, other things, 
the cannabis may not necessarily be for those things. There are a list of things in terms of pain, in terms of epilepsy, in terms of neurological diseases that I'm worried about. But I am really supposed to be short and brief. But as the introduction, I want to acknowledge something. This is a time in which, with the tour, we are mainly going on the windward side of the island. Unfortunately, we're not able to take you to um, Vermont. We're not able to take you to Chateaublay. We're not able to take you to Richmond. And we're not able to take you to a very important site called Lasham and Top Hill, where we have a sizable amount of land close to about 200 acres of land that the Prime Minister had pledged and promised for farmers who did not have land. We've surveyed the land. It's been tough. We had to survey it using a drone. And I'm surprised how accurate this is, but the authority has a drone. And with the assistance of the um, lands surveying department, we were able to survey this whole area of close to about 300 acres, and we are really soon, we created a list of the first trans, or the first set of persons who will be issued land at Lasham Top Hill so that they could now start the licensing process and they, they could I say, complete their licensing process and they could now start their cultivation once being linked up to one of the investors and so forth. So we're really pleased about that and that is gonna happen shortly uh, um, uh, after I think, but before that, I would. I wonder if I can invite the, the minister before he speaks. To, to oh, well, yes, we have two of our traditional cultivator groups, and um, I think Khaleesi is getting me the other this, but I want to invite um, SBG Rastafari Agri, please, if you could come. And if I mean, this is the secretary of SVG Rastafari Agri. And I will tell you, this is their license. It took, they were approved previously, like, like, like preliminary approved, pending, they, they had land, but they had some little problems with those lands. And we had to clear that up. And now that matter has been cleared up. I want to say congratulations. This is the license for um, SVG Rastafari Agri. And we will be working very, very closely with you. Let me. Yeah, give thanks, man. Blessings, yes, you know. But, but, but I wanted to give you something more. And I want this to be this is the terms and conditions of your license. This is the banking arrangement because at Bank of Savings and Grandines, they are going to be taking care of this particular group and making sure that they're set up correctly and that they meet with all the banking compliance. And then I want to add, and uh, before we go to the next group, and I think Kalisa is, you bring it in, yes, a cultivation guide. This is a guide that we give to all of our licensees on exactly how to look at the industry. But in addition, we've developed SOPs, 30 SOPs that will help any entity entering into this industry. Whether you're an investor or you are a local cultivator or a traditional cultivator, individual or group, these SOPs will deal with... Uh, what are SOPs? Yeah, SOPs are standard operating procedures and they go through security features they go through how you handle clearing the land the issue how you handle water issues and they also have look at diseases and so forth and things like that and what to deal with we want to make sure that you have a copy for your group and that this is for your organization. Yeah. The inspectors are going to be following up with you, making sure everything goes well. Congratulations. Yeah, let me say again. thanks again uh, to the authorities yeah. for 
It's in my life, so. Thank you very yeah, much. Nice. Now we have one additional one. We have another group. Um, Rufa, Rasfa Ako. Yes. And similarly, similar package. And I really want them to pay particular attention to SOPs. Well, I said, we found that our traditional cultivators, they are really experienced. However, we've also found that some of the investors and there are some new rules that are required. So the SOPs address some of these things. And standard operating procedures are critical if we are to obtain the quality that we need in order to ensure that we expand. Our goal, as I said, is to make sure we have the highest quality, but we have lower cost of production. Remember, banana used to have high quality, but high cost of production. And when prices fell, you know, we had a few little challenges. But we are hoping that we would actually be around for a very long time. And so, Rastafari, Greg's Rastafari Progressive Society, I want to, once again, hand over this particular package to you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and with that, I suppose that um, that was a, sorry for that, an introduction, as I said, to have a few words, or have some remarks from the Minister of Agriculture, the person who's responsible for where we are today with um, medicinal cannabis here on St. Vincent de Grenadines and his whole vision in terms of medicinal in property. Hey, if you notice a little patch here, Minister, you notice we have some dandelions and we have some, um, some tree of life and we have some variegated tiki thyme and there's some other things we would have here but this is symbolic of where we have to do it. The time of COVID and so forth, you know, um, I want to endorse efforts like this and all the efforts that the minister has been making on our behalf in terms of agriculture. Thank you very much, Dr. Thompson. I want to recognize the presence of Dr. Slater from the CARICOM Secretariat and Dr. Shallow, who did excellent work on that committee that was established that went throughout the entire CARICOM region to do consultations. I want to recognize the members of staff of the Medicinal Cannabis Authority, persons from the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, Rural Transformation, Industry, and uh, Labor. And I want us to give a special round of applause to the traditional cultivators who will be on the tour with us during the course of today. And the media, it's really good to have you here. Life is a journey. And on this journey, you will come across many ideas. If someone was driving out here in Rivulet four years ago to come pick up some seedlings and he took a picture of what hitherto was the Rivulet station primarily and they come back today and they take another picture and they put them side by side each other. The only word that could describe what we have here today is a transformation. And we deserve to give the MC a special commendation for that. When the history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the history of this period is recorded, it is going to reveal that the work of the MCA 
the work of this government in establishing a modern medicinal industry is one of the most transformative things as it pertains to development that we have ever pursued as a nation and as a people. I want to briefly speak about the journey traversed and to posit a few ideas and commendations as to the way forward. Let us all remember that we have a history in St. Vincent and the Grenadines of growing many different crops. And in 1992, the banana industry grossed $120 million. In 2010, however, because of climate change, because of the removal of preferences for the banana industry, and the entire revolution of the marketplace with banana. And I know that there are some persons who are here listening to us who are working with the Medicinal Cannabis Authority who worked in the banana industry. We were not able to compete with Latin America and West Africa. As a government, we had to search for new beginnings. And in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, cannabis has been grown for several decades. There was a start of an international movement whereby in Canada, we saw what was taking place and what was also taking place in Uruguay. And we decided that in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, in the spirit of Joseph Chatouet, and Duvalet, and Fanny Gregg, that we were going to be leaders in the medicinal cannabis industry. And I want to say today that St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we are leading the charge in CARICOM, and we are the leading country as we advance this cause for the development of a modern medicinal industry. It took hard work. We had to be very steadfast. We had to be resolute. And like any journey, some areas were dark. And even up to today, some people come and pelt pebbles, hoping to frighten a brave man like me. But I'm not moved by pebbles. Because the task ahead is great. And we have to keep our focus. At every turn, I want to thank the traditional cultivators. Because without the traditional cultivators, and Dr. Thompson said it quite clearly, would not have been here today. In some countries, there is a veritable war going on between traditional cultivators and the authorities. But in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have established a department of liaison officers, persons who come from within the bowels of the traditional cultivators community, who are ensuring that when issues, when they come to the fore, that they are addressed at the highest governmental level. We have in St. Vincent and the Grenadines many foreign direct investors and I want to thank them and I want to recognize their hard work and their investment. And we continue to share information with them because on this journey we have a lot to learn but we also have a lot to share. Last week Thursday I received a letter for information from a company and that company exhibited in that letter that they are the recipients 
of the first license to have a pharmacy in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to actually dispense medicinal cannabis. That made me happy. But what made me happier was the fact that they have designated and placed on their shelves a special place for two traditional cultivators and their organizations and their groups to have in those in that pharmacy on those shelves a dedicated space for the group and I want to recognize that as something that is revolutionary Greg's Rastafari Progressive Society that received their license today there is going to be a space on a shelf in the first pharmacy that will be open to dispense cannabis whereby persons in Greg's and if they're growing in different areas in the country they will be able to walk into a store and tell someone you see that product over there that soap you see that tincture that was produced by us for us that is development also taking place today is a meeting at the Bureau of Standards where the first set of licenses are being issued for the production of medicine in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that is non-cannabis. It is always important and critical as we develop any industry to ensure that we have a diversified production portfolio. My grandmother had put it best. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. A basket of different types of... Many, many different baskets definitely will bring greater benefits. And whilst cannabis is the leader, and cannabis will continue to be the leader for a very, very, very long time, we want to ensure that as many opportunities are open to locals and persons in the region and foreign direct investors. I was very happy that Dr. Thompson, right out here, is displaying in his little garden the diversity of the potential for the production of medicine in this, in this country. The issue, though, is that a lot of the different herbs that we have here, they are already legal. So you don't have to go through the processes that we'd have gone through when we were addressing the issue of cannabis. And I know that they are already addressing the issue of making medicine from Moringa, from turmeric, from sawasap. But you can't just grow the turmeric any old how. You can't grow the ginger any old how. You have to ensure that it is done in conditions whereby persons who are purchasing it internationally can verify and trace. I want to wish the MCA, the traditional cultivators and the process, all the very best. It is a step in the right direction and may God continue to bless our work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mason. As I said, we are just going to be led by our biotechnologist, Dr. Cummins, on a brief tour of the lab. The lab is not fully operational yet. When it becomes operational, unfortunately, because of the nature of the lab, persons won't be able to take a tour. We still have this special epoxy flow to do, which will be, that's why we had this later this week, we're starting. And additionally, we have some data, I mean, you must imagine there's going to be lots of cameras and uh, the, 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 the whole data connection of this, you know, is going to be important. Now, I want to say one last thing before we go. Now, if I were to have had a cannabis plant 
on my right and it looked absolutely wonderful another cannabis plant on my left some of you may not be able to distinguish between the two but one plant may have certain ingredients and components in it certain chemicals in it the terpenes and other cannabinoids that are excellent for epilepsy and for other types of condition and the other plant may be better for a different type of set of conditions if I were to take this plant and the product from that give it to the person who needs the other plant guess what they will not see the benefits and so the whole issue of testing and the research that has to be done on the types of plants and the different ingredients in the plant so one cannabis plant isn't the same as another and i want that message to really um, hit home that's one of the reasons why we have this particular lab and then there are some impurities pesticide i'm really grateful for the fact that the minister took an initiative it was popular locally but maybe outside some persons other because they didn't like it when the importation of touchdown was very restricted here in St. Vincent Grandines. But that's because that's one of the things that shouldn't be inside this plant and a lot of other chemicals. And so I'm, I, I'm, really, I'm really happy about those particular initiatives. So with that, I will hope the minister and Dr. Slater and Dr. Shallow, I wonder if you could uh, just follow me and Dr. Cummings will lead us into for a quick brief and me if you could follow a quick brief tour of the establishment. Yes, gentlemen, if you could, if Dr. Cummings, if you could lead us in. Sure. So we go through the office area and we kick a peep into the into the main lab. I said, if you would, please, if you would. Sure, if you can just step in. Again, are we waiting on anybody else to join us? It's open. Okay, so let me welcome both of you to the testing facility as we've spent uh, quite a bit of time over the last few months talking about this facility and talking about um, the work that has gone into preparing it and the important function that it will fill in the industry going forward. Now, as we stand here, the building is effectively decided in, divided into two sections. There's a non lab area. And there's a lab area. The non lab area will obviously house offices and so forth. Uh, the lab area is where most of uh, most of uh, of the action actually takes place. So again, my name is Jean Savo Cummings. I know we haven't met before, but uh, I'm the biotechnologist here, um, and I've effectively been leading the the task of, of getting things in order. The issue here, of course, is that there's nothing like this that has ever existed in St. Vincent and Grenadines. Um, and as a result, quite a bit of engineering, quite a bit of design has had to go into preparing the facility so that it meets the standards that are required for, for its function. Um, that has meant that a lot of things have had to come in from overseas. The tiles out here, the tiles inside there, the flooring, which has just come in last week, I think, and will be put down later on this week. All of the equipment is being sourced overseas, uh, as Dr. Thompson will have mentioned. Uh, we have a separate group who's actually coming in to run the facility, to equip and run the facility, so that uh, we as the authority don't physically do the running ourselves. Now, Dr. Thompson would have alluded to it during the speech, but when we talk about testing, there are really nine things essentially that we're looking for. When a cannabis plant comes in, we're looking for the cannabinoids, which is what everybody is, is hoping will be nice and, and beautiful here. The traditional cultivators will tell you that we have high THC and high CBD and everything else. Um, but the truth is we don't know what we have until we test it. And that is what determines eventually the value of the plant itself. And terpenoids are something else which we'll be testing. Terpenes are obviously responsible for the smell that we associate with it. Um, and so these two things really tell us what is in the plant and gives us an understanding of what the value is. Many of the other things we're testing for actually form part of a safety profile. So the moisture content, the amount of water that's left in it, uh, any residual solvents that are left after potentially manufacture. Uh, we're also looking at heavy metals, we're looking at any pesticides that are on the product. We will be examining it for foreign matter, sticks and stones and so forth. We'll also be examining it for mycotoxins, yeast and mold and the mycotoxins that you leave behind. 
and of course all the microbiology that we always talk about, all of the bacteria that are known to cause foodborne and medicine or borne diseases. Um, some of the equipment that are being used to do this you'll be familiar with, so when you talk about microbiology we're talking about PCRs and everybody knows very familiar with what PCR is because of, of COVID. Um, but many of the other bits of equipment are high, very chemical, very sophisticated pieces of equipment. We talk about mass spectrometers and GCs and LCs and so forth, um, which really represent quite a sophisticated investment into this industry. I would say that there are different ways of testing for different things. If I give you an example of uh, heavy metals, um, so here in St. Vincent, we have an agricultural industry that is strong and it has been robust for a long time. Um, but we don't really have a good, we've never been in a position to test products really for heavy metals. There's a small capacity which exists down in the plant protection. Um, but even when you look at that particular type of test, there are several different ways of doing it. So the traditional way is using a type of machine called an atomic absorption. Um, and this is the way we've been doing it for a long time, it tends to work, but it doesn't really give us the specificity that we need for medicine. Obviously, medicine is something which potentially is going directly into your bloodstream. Even the smallest quantities can prove deadly to a patient. And so instead of using an AA, we're going with an ICPMS, which is a much, much more sophisticated piece of equipment. Uh, it allows us to get the, the numbers really low in terms of the specificity, and to really help us to prove that the product that is coming out of the ground here is safe for human consumption. Now, the facility we can walk into just to take a quick peek. As we said, the floors as they are, are unfinished. We have product which has come in last week to actually finish the floors. And again, everything in here has been designed with the idea of accreditation. When I say accreditation, what I mean is that uh, the results coming out of this facility need to be recognized by people away from this country, basically. So if we, if we have uh, a sample that comes out and we say, listen, there's no, there's no microbiome no microbials on this, when it gets to Barbados, Barbados may decide, you know, we don't trust St. Vincent. So we may need to do the test ourselves. If we have a situation where our tests are accredited to an international standard, then that removes that, 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 that problem. It eventually adds more value to the product here because when it's being exported, it doesn't have to be tested again. So more of the value stays here and it stays with our producers. And so everything you see in here is designed with accreditation. Right? You'll notice as you walk around from here all the way to the lab areas that there's no exposed wood because wood is a no-no as far as accreditation is concerned. You will see out here that these are normal ceiling tiles, office tiles. But when you go inside, you will see that the tiles are replaced are actually venom and much smoother. The walls in there have been compounded. Uh, like I said, we're doing the floors this, this week. And the entire intention is to make it as easy as possible to clean so as to ensure that, that uh, there's no source of contamination coming from the facility itself. And so, if you want, we can just take a quick tour inside. Uh, it's effectively divided into four different rooms, which we can have a look at. Hey, Bufa, I'm not moved by pebbles, you know. You know, go on, chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this, this area is just going to be for sample receiving. So the operators would come in, they would down their, their gloves and gowns and so forth. All the material that comes in here, if it comes from this farm, uh, will be recorded in terms of what comes from when it arrives and so forth, and will be stored here. Some initial separation for testing may, may actually begin here as well. Um, but this is essentially sample receiving and will eventually be an area for product storage as well. And if again you look at the tiles, you can see exactly what I'm talking about, about the difference between the tiles in here and the tiles outside. And uh, again, this is something we had to completely import here into Zenit. We, 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 we were going to put in the scene, but they're running data cables um, in another few days for cameras and so forth. So we didn't want to put up tires to take them back down again. That's it. Yeah, so this is the main lab area, um, quite a big space. In terms of laboratory space, is actually excessive. We don't need this much space to completely be able to do what we need to do right now. But of course, the truth is that capacity always expands and so we always have to think about what you're going to need next year, what you're going to need the year after that, which is why the space has been designed as such. Um, we're still at this moment, you can see, putting in electricals all around. Quite a bit is quite a bit complicated because we've had to run for 110, for 220 as well as for three phase. 
and so uh, that is effectively taken some time and has required quite a bit of, of engineering. But this is the main lab area where most of the organic testing will be done. The small room which is behind you is where most of the me metals testing will be done, so the heavy metals that I mentioned earlier. The organics will be done in here. And this small room on the left will be will house the microbiology suite. So this will have PCRs and incubators that we need and so forth to be in this, in this room. So overall, the space for lab testing is just over 1,100 square feet. Um, it's effectively enough, more than enough really for us to be able to do what we hope to do. But again, as we look at expanding capacity here in St. Vincent, as well as being able to offer, as Dr. Thompson said, offer testing to the neighboring islands, um, we really need to have this capacity here, which is why it's been designed as such. And so, as I said, uh, just the four rooms, uh, just the four rooms, and on the other side of it is just offices, we can go, go through that way. to the emergency exit door. And on this side, uh, there's just a couple of offices, kitchens, bathrooms, and so forth. Yes, so it's a good question. So for uh, certain bits of tests, like the metals room that Bruce was last night, yes, right, so the metals room, because of the the chemicals are involved, particularly some of the gases. Um, right, so most of the actual physical manipulation will be done in fume hoods, and those hoods will be vented through filters to the outside. Um, several other bits of the equipment also require gases, on the LCs, the MSs as well. Um, and those, again, the gases will be piped into the outside, and then the ventilation will go, will go through to the outside. It's a very good question. Um, but overall, this is the facility. Like I said, we are, we spent, I think, probably eight months now um, getting it ready almost. Um, and we're finally at the point How where. How about environment you're friendly that we have some solar panels to come up? We have solar water heaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, as a matter of fact, matter of fact uh, we do have plants on this side of the on that side, soil. Yes, sir? But, um, Right now, in terms of the quality of the equipment, extremely sensitive, very, very sensitive equipment that um, doesn't even the stuff we have to put in. Um, you know, um, you, you will test. Maybe we have to talk, talk to you. Surge protectors and all that sort of stuff to protect this is, is critical. So, you know. Um, we can't afford these equipment to be thrown off because they're coming out of the United States or Japan and so forth and we have to make sure that um, we can't be down for any period of time. Yes.
As you could see, like the farm, those that traditional, traditional farm, sensei, high grade. Just going good for free forest, you know. You don't walk really back there for see more, you know. Yeah. So more and more, you go see more better results and thing. Yeah. But for now, we just do some planting going on. Just the first you could see going on and going back. Yeah. Stop. So in there. Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. Good morning. Welcome to the CCC marijuana farm. This is the outfield. This is the first crop that we planted. We just planted these last week, so this is the first crop we have. We have an ex another section around to the back. I assume later we will take a tour and show you guys around. Right? This is an example of terracing and these plants are produced in these greenhouses and they use the method of clones where they've identified a particular plant that has peculiar properties and they're able to take that plant and multiply it many times to get the same daughters all the time. The cannabis plant is one in which you can have a male which is not so good and female which is great, wonderful, beautiful. And they try their best in order to just have females and so forth, you know. So this is their outdoor section. And then we just take a quick look at the greenhouse. Yeah, okay, right. Sure. My name is Tara Mop and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Medicinal Cannabis Authority. And I'm pleased to welcome the media here and traditional cultivators and the Minister of Agriculture here to Caribbean Cannabis Company. Now, when we speak about cannabis, we speak about traditional cultivators and foreign investors. But they are actually local investors who are um, pumping in money into this industry. And this is an example of a local investor that has invested significantly in the cannabis industry. When I say local investor, I mean the whole shareholdership of this company is 100% Vincentians. And if you look at beyond the shareholdership, when we go down, the general manager is a Vincentian. The cultivation manager of this farm is a Vincentian. And this company is also working on constructing a processing facility. And the person who is spearheading, who is leading that, is also a young Vincentian. Now what you would see with this company, is that it is not just about local investors. This company has in its workforce, it has over 25 persons here involved in farming and it has about 13 persons involved in the construction up there. And comprising of the 25 persons in production, we have traditional cultivators involved. In our aspect of the industry, we have traditional cultivators as licensee and as master growers, as investors. So they have traditional cultivators here. Importantly too, they have here women. A lot of women are involved in the medicinal cannabis industry. Of the 25 workers here, you have about 10 women here um, taking care of the plants in the nursery and so forth. So this, this, this industry is, just, is not just about foreign investors and traditional cultivators. It is attracting significant attention from local events, investors too. Thank you. You know, every, every single plant, remember I was telling you about our seed to sale system that we have with Ample and so forth. Every plant here is captured under a seed to sale. We know if a plant dies, the authority, this is supposed to be reported to us. We know how many plants have gone out to a traditional cultivator who has a contract with this company to plant with them and so forth. Mm. And we also will know how much are going to go for processing and so forth. It's very important that we keep an overall track. And in our data room, we essentially have to be able to track all, all this. So you may find these are different species of plants. They want to know which ones are going well in, in Vincentian 
conditions which are not going and they're local strains here they've picked out some very special local strains that they're watching and, and monitoring and so forth too okay And how long do you keep them in this plastic? Um, I think they keep them up to about two months and then keep them, keep them in the fridge. Oh, okay. These are basically clones, they're not feeding. A variety, okay. what, what strain is it? Jacqueline, I think. Jacqueline. It's a foreign strain. So basically, the mother plants in greenhouse too, so they cut off this of the mother plants and then plant it in a different place. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, they have one and two male between but two just majority females. Right. Okay. Okay. Where's the local strain? The um, local strains, strains they have some inside. Any outside? outside? No. Local um, nine inches. Yeah. Oh yeah, just. Yeah, yeah coming down. Yeah, those are local. Yeah, they look okay. like them. Look like local. Yeah, ready to go. Some I noticed some of them. So that means he could go to another plant if they continue to touch another plant because that's not right. Before anyone enters each of the farms, the persons has to sign their name in a logbook. That is part of our standard and compliance regulations. That way, this is part of our tracking system. So everyone that enters the farm, if there is an issue, we would be able to track who was on the farm and at what time and why they were on the farm.
Jack, um, map the food truck because, yeah. This is his farm, his main, his main plot is on a flatter area there. He's done quite a lot of uh, escaping. But if you notice the shape of the land, it's sloping and so forth. And we wanted to bring you here because this is an example of somebody who has linked with an investor. The plants he has are really being supplied by the investor, other um, inputs and so forth and he is doing that cultivate to sell his product back to them and um, you know I don't know Mr. Jocelyn I know it's been I know it's been tough right he's been attending a lot of our training courses he's been attending a lot of our our um, training on SOPs and things like that and um, um, I don't know how, how are things going so far all right now as we can see, it's been a lot of work and um, things still taking shape. There is um, a lot of debris still lying here and there, but the, um, the actual area where the, um, the stuff has been planted is relatively all right. Yeah. Um, yes. As you can see, they are in good shape. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of work to be done, but um, mm -hmm. as time goes on, I, I, I guess I'll get there, you know. Yes. Mr. Let me just say, um, you know, we are allowing, in the law, it allows us to give uh, some of the traditional cultivators a little break in terms of their fencing, in terms of um, cameras and so forth. And they could wait a little while until they have the, the resources to be able to do that so they can get started up. Yes, yes. And as you know, he's displaying his ID um, and his log book and so forth, and I think right. he's building his shed there yeah. and so forth. And I think Mr. Cheshera, you, you, you're dealing directly with him and so forth, right? Yes. <clears throat> well, I was given the opportunity to work with Mr. Jocelyn. When we first visit Mr. Jocelyn, we, need, we saw that he needed help. And to grow medicinal cannabis, you have to practice good agricultural practices. That must be in place. And as you may look at the, the soil and the areas where are clean, that is good for your husbandry. That must be practiced in good agricultural practices. Well, we walk along with Mr. Justin for the time, and we have seen that he learns very fast. Yeah. And things that were absent, we, we put it into place for Mr. Justin. Later on, we, we do believe that Mr. Justin would become one of our top farmers yeah. around here. I am proud to be here with Mr. Jocelyn and the, the team of the, the NCA. And I'm particularly happy because if the cameras can just show the different aspects of the farm, he's practicing diversification in great detail. He is into livestock production. If you notice, he has animals there. And I'm certain that there's a market for, for that animal here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and also in Grenada for export. He has cassava, peas, and those peas will be in for Christmas. Yeah, sure. he, ha he has plantings here and I'm certain that with a little bit more fertilizer soon he will be able to, to sell to the local markets. I also want to recognize that he did not destroy the fruit trees. Right here there is a, a papa tree there is, I see a plum rose, nutmeg, nutmegs, cocoa, yeah. and what he is actually doing, and there's also a, a, golden, a golden apple, breadfruit, he's in, and very importantly, the avocado. The avocado. So yeah. here we are seeing a traditional cultivator. On a Friday, he can sell coconuts to persons who are vending in Kingstown. He could get an income from that. He would also get an income from the plantains, the breadfruit, the livestock and he is he has about quarter of an acre cultivated in medicinal cannabis he he is also importantly linked to an investor and it was a, a promise by the policymakers that we are not going to leave our traditional cultivators behind 
And Mr. Jocelyn is a prime example of a traditional cultivator who is up and frontal as it pertains to the quest for us to fully integrate all stakeholders within the agriculture sector and within the medicinal cannabis industry. I want to thank Mr. Jocelyn. I see that he's proudly wearing his, his ID card that was granted by the Medicinal Cannabis Authority. I also notice that displayed on the farm is evidence that he has a license and it started a very simple process and I really want to encourage traditional cultivators who are out there who have not yet come forward. I'm asking you to come forward, come to the Medicinal Cannabis Authority. The administrative apparatus is there to, to welcome you and to guide you through the process and if Mr. Jocelyn could do it and he has done it and we are here to, to witness the, the fruits of, of his labor then we all can do it but we must first participate and be a part of this very important process. Good morning again. My name is Tara Mab, Chief Operating Officer of the Medicinal Cannabis Authority. And I'm pleased again to welcome you to this site. We've been this morning to sites where we saw cultivation. But this medicinal cannabis industry is not just about cultivation. It's, it, it is a multi-dimensional industry that starts with cultivation goes up to manufacturing, it includes research, it includes dispensing of cannabis, and it includes export. So here we are at, uh, at this construction site where a state-of-the-art processing facility is being established. Presently, there are over 17 persons employed at this facility. And again, as I said before, this industry is not just about foreign investment. In fact, the investment being pumped into this facility is a local one. The shareholders of this company is a local shareholder. We are anticipating by the end of this year we will have about three major manufacturing plants up and ready. And as the manufacturing plants are established, then we will see the incorporation of traditional cultivators into this industry. This plant here will be processing cannabis from traditional cultivators, from local investors, and also from local cultivators. So the medicinal cannabis industry is one that is inclusive. It has a space for foreign investors. It has a space for local investors. It has a space for local cultivators. It has a space for traditional cultivators. It has a, a space for youth. It has a space for women. And it also has space for medical practitioners. And I think Dr. Thompson um, has spoken this morning about the patient access regime where we have trained almost a hundred medical practitioners in the safe prescri prescribing and the dispensing of medicinal cannabis. And so the industry is one that is inclusive and multi-dimensional. Um, from within my department, Mr. Osa Samuel, who is a senior inspector, has been leading the monitoring and the enforcement of this facility and he can speak about physical planning approval, the review of the plans and so forth be before this, the construction of this facility actually began. Oh, sir? It's a pleasant good morning. Before construction can even commence, we have to do a series of um, inspections before we can commence in terms of the operation. So this would have to go to the physical planning for approval. We would have to um, review it from the inspectorate of the Medicinal Cannabis Authority and then we would have to make several site visits, site visits because you want to make sure that it does not contravene any act or it, it, it cause any harm to the environment. So the uh, environmental assessment has, was conducted to make sure, ensure that the vicinity 
the, the, the supremacy is, is okay. Uh, make sure that the wastewater is well taken care of. So there's a lot of different areas that we have to tap into, make sure that the wildlife, the biodiversity, everything is in, in full country, even in, in, in full order. This, this um, facility, when we issue the commencement, the, this, will, this will have like a research, they will be conducting some research here. They also have a drying facility. So the birds will be coming from the feed as you visited several farms before. So it'll be transported from the feed in a wet, in wet, taken to this facility where they will be um, dried. So they have a dry, drying facility here and they have a, a processing facility as well. Um, the protocols of this facility fa follow similar to those that when you visit a, fa a farm, we have to make sure that you have proper security, you have to sign a logbook, we have to ensure that everything is well accounted for. Because within this industry, we are building a modern cannabis industry and we want to ensure whatever we do, we are stick, we, we regulate, everything must be done according to the books so that the industry can only grow from strength to strength. So they are probably, this is in any early phases, so what we do periodically, we come and ensure that do conduct site visits to ensure that everything is going smoothly, that they don't deviate, uh, you know, any changes they will let us know. And then, you know, because we, we have to work hand in hand in order to build this industry. It's a very, very important one because uh, we want it to grow from strength to strength, as I said before. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. The value chain for the medicinal cannabis industry is one that has many different segments from seed to sale. This morning we visited a, a nursery and we saw several persons employed addressing the issue of ensuring that planting material of a particular type best fit for cultivation is being dealt with at the stage of the nursery. Let us recall and take note that there is significant work as it pertains to transportation because plants and seeds and seedlings and workers have to be transpo transported to and from different sites. We are here at a construction site where the focus is on value addition. And in many developing countries, we are simply exporters of raw material. However, we are seeing in the development of the medicinal cannabis industry here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that we are not only going to be the growers of cannabis and the exporters of the raw material, but we are going to add significant value right here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Some of it will go into the nutraceutical industry and we anticipate that we will get some of our products into the pharmaceutical industry. I want to congratulate the local investors who have put their, their time and their energies into ensuring that we have a facility being constructed of this nature, because it's all well and good to have an excellent lab and have the infrastructure at the MCA, but you have to now have the, the build out in the industry so that when the product is produced here, you will have to have it tested and verified by the MCA. So I just want persons to be aware that we are spending a lot of time to ensure that we add as much value here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines so that we can increase the economic returns, not only to the country in a general sense, but directly to our producers and our traditional cultivators and other local producers would always form a part of that cadre of persons who will benefit from this industry. As I said previously, by the end of this year, we are anticipating that they, providing that there are no challenges because the processing equipment has to be imported. So providing that there are no challenges with respect to shipping and COVID and so forth, we are anticipating that there will be three major processing facilities up and running by the end of this day, on of this year. There is one um, about, there is one almost completed in Fountain. Um, the equipment is here, they have been imported. Um, the facility is about 
85% complete. The challenge with that one, that one was supposed to be up and running by the second quarter of this year. But the challenge was the setting up of the equipment. A special technician has to come into the country. The manufacturer has to send a special technician to set up the equipment so as to safeguard the warranties and so forth. And because of COVID, that has been delayed. And there's another facility that has been leased in a warehouse that has been leased in Georgetown to set up a processing facility. The equipment are currently being um, pre um, um, set up in, in, in North America. And when that equipment comes down, it's the same challenges that the existing one is ha having. That one won't have that same challenges because equipment will come and they will come in prefabricated containers, rest down, and processing will begin immediately. That is what we are anticipating, providing that there are no challenges with COVID and shipment. Good morning again. We are here at a, a, a behind me is a construction site of a modern facility here in Montgrenan. Um, just, just, just to show you, um, we, we are running a little with the weather, but this is a, a 5,000 square meter site. When it's completed, it would be the single largest greenhouse facility on the island. Um, this, this is what it would look like when, the, when it's finished. Um, we are, do, we are currently doing some construction work here. We are running a little bit behind time, but with, with persistence, we will, we will we'll make it. We have Mr. Charles yeah. Scott. He is the, um, he's dealing with the construction. He's the... I'm the co-founder and director of agriculture for Franchise Cannabis Corp. Right. I wonder yeah. if you could just say a few words for us, please. Yeah, the site's, the site's amazing, but first let me say how amazing the people on the island are. It's absolutely one of the most beautiful places that I've ever visited and I think it has more potential um, than anywhere in the Caribbean to produce perfect cannabis flowers. Uh, and I'm happy to come here and share the knowledge with all. Yeah. I want to welcome all to the constituency of South Central Winwood. And uh, in these areas, communities, we have a history of very hard-working traditional cultivators. We are happy to welcome the investor who is here. And right here, we are in Mount Grenon, And we're seeing the, the earthworks, which have already started. It is anticipated that when this facility is completed that we are going to employ between 32 and 36 people right away between 32 and 36 persons in cultivation we expect persons from neighboring communities to come to receive their, their training and as mr map outlined earlier you're going to have a lot of young persons working here a lot of of women also working here to ensure that they actively participate in the industry. This land, many years ago, 11 acres of land, we had bananas cultivated here up until about three or so years ago. And we're seeing a change in land use and it's definitely going to add to the development of the, of the area. There's another sizable investment in about 
10 minutes drive from here. And I really want to thank the investors for choosing a spot like this because they are going to find here the, the human resource capacity needed, the, the land is here, and they are bringing with them the capital. They are working also with traditional cultivators, they are working with local contractors, and I want to cement this very important point, that the medicinal cannabis industry has brought and will continue to bring more employment to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I really want to thank Dr. Thompson for the hard work that he's doing with his team. He's working very long hours to ensure that we are going to have the, the successes needed to advance this industry. And once again, we want to welcome you. You've been welcomed many times. And we're looking forward for this as a finished product and, and operationalized. Hey, Mr. Charles. So dark in here, don't say. What? You don't see. Let me see that. Let me bus. Yeah, man. Not good. Not good. Nah, that's not good. Look. You was asking me how mm -hmm. to Yeah, this is one of your women them too. Um, yeah. Let's just squeeze them from like way in. Yeah, Tara. You see them too. Now we'll chop and we'll thin. Mm. And some big and broad. And so what causes this? Well, you see, that's how they are in the male. That's how they get. They grow. They come from the female. Mm. So that's yeah, fine, boys. That's one of the, the, one of the, one of the sign. Hey, Junior, here. Yeah. You have maffa dice, both male and female. Yeah, 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 Mm -hmm. so one you know this? You know this one? Call him, no, call him. I told him where you come from. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, by mistake. A pocket bag. blow off yeah. he freed up he rest oh. um, I know but but guess what mm -hmm. it wouldn't bust right now mm -hmm. soon 
Soon, 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 look at this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look it right there. Mm -hmm. Soon bust. Mm -hmm. At that stage there. Yeah. And look yeah. it there. Yeah, you done, some done bust to watch. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. So, this is what I was telling Van Lee. Van Lee. No, um. Oh, come, come. This, 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 this now. So when this your boss out, it 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 pollinates the rest, you know. So you know you don't need that. You don't need the males to right to breed up the field and the field will come seed up, you know all that. So you have to get rid of these. Give that. And, and, and ball. Right. So they call that mass this one this is whole both male and, 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 and some, and some of them would only send. Mm -hmm. But listen, but listen, even though yeah. both are, hey. even though let me just break too. <laughs> I really just want you to tell so that um, yeah. what you call far um cross pollinate and next farm. You have to be like some very close. Very close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well happen. you would have had male plants on your farm too. Every, trying to get seeds for the next time. Everybody have male because yeah. we have to have plant about six or seven in a hole, in a hole. so that you can remove the maphrodites yeah, and leave yeah. the female alone. All right. Yeah, so. Okay, that way. So he, he really needs some, some... Yeah, he need attendance now yeah. and for, get rid of them. A uh, pleasant good afternoon. Well, we are at a local cultivator farm. I know all you and you will have the experience of visiting a traditional cultivator. Um, Approximately, you have about probably five workers working on this farm currently. Um, just like the traditional cultivators, the local cultivators are important. Um, from time to time, in our, in, our, in our routine, we visit these farms to make sure that everything is on, on point. We follow all the protocols in terms of ensuring that the you know, security breach, um, the logbooks are in good conditions. Um, also that they are practicing good soil and water conservation techniques, ensuring that everything is under good, good control. So once again, we are in this field and we are just want to make just taking a visit to make sure that everything is on point. One would observe that a number of these farmers are using plastic mulch, they have irrigation, and they have water tanks and so forth. And this is something we, won't do, we do want to promote. It's not absolutely necessary, but we think that it's going to help with the whole idea of good agricultural and collection practice, GACP. And this is going to ensure that St. Vincent and the Grenadines produces the highest quality, but the total cost of operations is still relatively low. <laughs> One very important aspect of this industry is the transfer of information, the transfer of knowledge. We have in St. Vincent and the Grenadines traditional cultivators who have been doing illicit cultivation for many decades. And we are seeing a careful marriage of information whereby they are sharing certain conditionalities that are particular to St. Vincent and the Grenadines with persons who are coming from different countries where the conditions are different. Because of that, we have basically a farmer field school approach to the building of human resource capacity. And uh, for example, today we saw where the Greg's Rastafari Progressive Society interacting with uh, another local investor and off the bat, there was a sharing of information. I really want to thank the MCA for creating this platform so that you can have greater consensus as we build this national industry. Them, 
get rid of too much. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Simone Jacobs and I'm an inspector at the Medicinal Cannabis Authority. This afternoon we are here at um, one of our foreign investor companies. The name of it is Sativa Medic. Um, with me I have Mr. Philman Allen. He is the supervisor of the compound. Um, currently this company has not yet been launched but they are in the process of making preparations to be launched soon. They currently have five, em five persons employed with the company. Um, apart from them employing persons permanently, they've also employed persons to do construction. As you can see behind me, they've constructed some prefabricated um, buildings. Those would be um, for housing, for storage and office space as well as for the fencing. Persons were employed as well for all of those things. I would now hand the mic over to Mr. Allen to tell you a little bit about the company. Yes, um, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am Philman Allen, as you were told. Okay, I'm the supervisor for Sativa Medic. This is a company, it's a foreign company, Vincentially registered. And we are dealing here with um, the, the cannabis business. Now, we have presently eight persons, eight persons employed, right? What we have seen, what you're seeing here is our research, is part of our research program. We had done some plans in the back early on, and we did, we did well. But we were trying to see how much these plants would perform because we would have removed all the topsoil from this area. And based on what I, I, I saw there, I think the soil is okay for production of marijuana. We are about to expand the process because we haven't really um, gotten the seeds that we have ordered. We are planning to do some feminized seeds and say come next week, we would be um, operating on full because um, I've already contacted the, um, the head of the operation so that we could get our cameras and thing in. We have already um, contacted OSV to get our sign up and we're going to put up the, um, super, the, the certificate. All these things we are going to put in place. On this compound, we have irrigation and this other thing to supplement what we will get from the rainfall. We have our buildings here, it's an office, a small lab for testing. We have our um, kitchenette. We have our um, washroom and our storeroom. All these are prefabricated buildings that we ourselves built. And it was really co commendable for the guys who work with me to really do this because they have never involved in this sort of um, operation before. I am looking forward for Sativa Medic to take off because I think the guys know they have a knowledge of cannabis. We, we had so many back there, the, the males, the plants doing the same thing that the, 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 the men do. If you allow them between girls, you lose them, they breed them up. So we learn all that process now. And we notice that the fertilizer that you give, the food that you give, we have forged you to get big buds because we notice after a while these buds really swell up and I know the secret about it. So I guess when we started, we should be able to get some very good results. I don't know if... A big bud? Of course! That's what you do when you do tours. Who does tours with six feet in here and people go around wearing all kind of shit with it? We had one of our larger size um, investor farms. Um, we had the Mount Bentic in Mount Bentic area. And one of the great advantages of this is the, the terrain. This is flat land. And they're able to put in irrigation and so forth. They've just started, but we expect this along with their processing plant to be um, one of the formidable companies uh, here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, we are quite pleased that they 
have chosen St. Vincent as their, um, their place of, of investment. They're out of Europe, and I think this is also going to help facilitate that whole process of export of product back to Europe, which is one of the essential things that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is looking for. Because as we strive to build a medicinal cannabis industry that is export-oriented, and already they have linked themselves up with a number of traditional cultivator groups and individuals who they'll be purchasing from. I do, Minister, if you want to say a few words and so on this. We are here in Agriculture Region 3. And for persons who have analyzed the production statistics in agriculture in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you will be aware that in Region 3, because of the topography of the land, extremely flat, it lends itself to mechanization. And because of that, persons are able to increase both production and productivity. As we can see here this afternoon, Kana SVG is going to benefit significantly by producing on this extremely flat land. And uh, we have noticed that they have invested significant sums of money into the irrigation process that they have here. The soils are excellent in, in this area and uh, I am aware that in terms of employment they're doing great work with many persons who are from different areas in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I want to wish this company all the very best and uh, they continue to do good work. As we can witness here this afternoon to my right I, I usually call him Mr. 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 Springer. He is a, a grammar school student, and then he pursued an associate's degree in, in business, and he is about to um, complete that. And it's really good to see how the industry is incorporating young people and, and women. We also have on the team some persons who were working in the hospitality industry. If you look at the faces here, you know, you remember seeing his face as, as a waiter at one of the, the popular hotel restaurants in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And because of COVID-19, where we saw the closure of many ports, airports and seaports around the world, it has reduced the throughput at these establishments. And here we are seeing where persons who hitherto worked in the hospitality industry, they are also finding jobs in the medicinal cannabis industry. The intention is for us to have an excellent production platform addressing issues of cultivation and manufacturing, also to have an, an export market. But St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have all the factors of production needed to establish a wellness medicinal platform for cannabis. And we expect to see an incorporation of this wellness platform where medical doctors will be forming relationships with persons who are in the hotel industry to ensure that when the guests are in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they're not only here to enjoy the, the beauty of our, our country, but to get well. And this speaks to the, the second tier of the, the industry, which is the patient access that we have done excellent work on so far. My name is Brad Lohman from New Chapman's Village. As we don't have any plans out as yet, but we get in there. It's been a nice experience working here.